Okay, hello zoology students. Welcome back to your online zoology lessons. <clears throat> I'm Mr. Grippa, as you well know. We're back here in the man cave getting ready for lesson three. So today we're going to start breaking down our mollusk classification. And the way I have it mapped out is looks as though we are going to be discussing two classes today. We're going to talk about the gastropods and the bivalves. So let's go ahead and get that started. So let's reduce you. Let's reduce you. And let's get today's lesson underway. So uh, mollusk classification. Our first class is going to be class gastropoda or the gastropods. They are all the snails, slugs, the sea butterflies, sea hares, limpets, and animals called nudibranchs. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. <clears throat> so here are your limpets. Let me get here to uh, laser pointer. All right. So these are your limpets right here. Um, again, we talked about, we had some of these on lesson two, where we looked at their foot and how they hold down to the substratum. Um, this is the sea butterfly. So you've got the, the foot, two extensions of the foot that kind of give it the wings. Here you can see the shell. Um, and they are uh, not very commonly seen. Uh, I've never seen one. Uh, but you can see how they got the name. The two wings kind of branch out here and kind of give it that butterfly look. And then, of course, we have the snails and the slugs, which are basically just snails without a shell. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the gastropods. All right. So by far, gastropods are the largest and most diverse group of mollusks. There are about 40 thousand living species 40,000 living species of gastropods and um, there are about 15,000 fossil species there is not one term that can apply to them all so here are a large here's a large list of some of the common names of gastropods there are the snails limpet slugs whelks periwinkles conks sea slugs sea hares, sea butterflies, just to name a few. So there are a lot of different kinds of of bival or of uh, excuse me of gastropods uh, in that group, forty thousand. So they are either shelled or shellless. If they are a shell, they have a single shell. So only one, only one shell. And they move by a muscular foot located on the ventral side. So when you think about a snail or a slug crawling on its belly, um, that is its foot and is there on its ventral slide. Uh, ventral side, excuse me. They're usually sluggish, slow moving, or sedentary, meaning that they are anchored in one spot and will not move. Um, this is due to their shells and slow loker, locomotive uh, organ. So they're just not very fast, basically what that means. Because of the way that they move uh, by using that foot, that will limit, will limit their ability to move quickly. The shell is often always one piece, or as we can sometimes call it, a univalve. Uni for one, valve meaning half, so it just has the one shell. And some have an operculum or a plate that covers the shell opening. So if you've ever seen a conch in the ocean, um, they're, they kind of resemble really huge snails, but they have a plate that covers the opening. So when they feel threatened, they draw up inside the shell and then that plate covers the opening so that their soft body is not, um, vulnerable to predators. So the other class is going to be class bivalvia. These guys right here, the bivalves, uh, bi meaning two, valves meaning half, and you can see they are the clams. So here's a giant clam, and you can see the two halves of the shell. They are the mollusks with two shells. They include the muscles, 
clams, scallops, oysters, and shipworms. They range in size from the tiny seed shell of one to two millimeters in length, which if you're familiar with the metric system, uh, one to two millimeters is not very big at all. I mean, we're talking uh, maybe the, the width of a blade on a pair of scissors, give you a good idea. Uh, to the giant South Pacific clam, which can be up to three to four feet in length. So there's a huge difference in their size and shape. Uh, most bivalves are sedentary and they are filter feeders. So what that means is sedentary means that they stay in one spot. They're anchored to the bottom and they do not move. And filter feeder means that they actually filter their food right out of the water. They have no head, they have no radula, and they have very little cephalization. And cephalization means a collection of sensory organs in one end of the body, which, you know, for us would be our head. If you think about our sensory organs, they're almost all located uh, in our head, our, our main sensory organs our sense of hearing, sense of equilibrium, both in our ears, our sense of smell, our sense of taste, and our sense of vision, all within our head, and that is what cephalization is. The two shells are held together by a hinge ligament that allows the valves to gape ventrally. So this is why when you find their shells, you usually only find one, because a ligament, as we know, is soft tissue, Soft tissue will eventually decompose, so when the animal dies and the soft tissue that holds the two shells together, uh, when that decomposes, then the shells fall apart into their two halves. And so when you find a seashell, you know, it's usually just the one that you find. And then when it goes to close its body, it will, uh, it has adductor muscles that squeeze the two shells together and that's how it keeps it keeps it closed each valve have has an umbo which is the oldest part of the shell and the umbo is the hump so that's where the shell starts to grow and as the shell grows the the mantle lays down new shell material on the edge the outer edge away from the umbo so the edge that opens is going to be the youngest part of the shell and the hinge part of the shell is the oldest part of the shell. All right, so let me make sure. Yep, that's our last one. So that uh, is a quickie one there. So go in, that uh, concludes that lesson. So go on in and uh, find the questions that will be on School of G4 today's lesson and uh, answer them. And that will conclude today's fun and exciting, uh, stunning lecture on mollusks and the gastropods and bivalves. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you tomorrow.